everyone. The ability to assess the chest radiograph is a necessary skill all medical imaging technologists, radiologists, and other radiological personnel must possess. Although there is a standard medical criteria for guiding the, the assessment of the chest radiographs, there is no standard acceptance limit. Thus, validating the acceptance of an image is very subjective and inconsistent. This project aims to create an automated solution using computer vision systems to increase the efficiency and consistency of quality assessment of digital chest x-rays done by medical imaging technologists and radiologists. Our research questions are, is the CNN a more accurate image classifier compared to traditional classifiers? Can automating quality assessment of non-region chest x-rays decrease the frequency of falsely validated images? To what extent does the CNN match the radiologist quality inspection results? And in what areas does automated evaluation fall short of manual evaluation? Our research objectives are to determine the pros and cons of various algorithmic approaches to classifying X-ray images, to develop a CNN model that evaluates chest X-ray images against the medical criteria, to test the success rate of the CNN in classifying chest X-ray images, to determine whether the CNN can achieve a 95% accuracy on radiologists evaluated chest x-ray images and to determine strong and weak points of the CNN by comparing visual outputs to radiologist evaluation. Our thesis statement reads, the use of a convolutional neural network to replace manual quality inspection of digital chest x-rays will decrease the frequency of erroneous results being accepted. So although we did not have clearance to get data and rejection rates from local hospitals in Guyana, numerous studies such as Wallet 2010 and the references to clinics have included that post-digital revolution, rejection rates of radiologists generally fall around 5%, giving us a baseline of 95% accuracy to set us if we wanted to reduce our error rates. On the other hand, in terms of building the actual model, Medical computer vision has developed a long way from simple query systems to traditional machine learning algorithms such as naive bias to more recently deep learning. Projects such as AlexNet have shown that local connectivity makes spatial features more of a priority. This feature, combined with sparsely connected layers as well as shared rates between neurons, results in CNNs being the most efficient class of neural networks for image analysis. Here's a, a basic conceptual model of our, our solution, checks the data. So first, the X-ray is inserted and converted into tensors. Then, a model that was trained in Google Collaboratory is called by the API and used to output the predictive class. GradCam technology is applied onto the convolution layer on layer 4 to generate a heat map output that helps to detail why exactly the image was inserted. Our study design was conquered in two stages. The first stage revolved around the development of the evolutional neural network using PyTorch and trained with Google Collaboratory. The API was built with a Flask framework and the, the model was trained using 5,856 pre-labeled radiographs from online open sources. The second stage revolved around the statistical evaluation of the convolutional network. It was tested twice the first test involved 200 images from local hospitals being evaluated by a team of 11 radiologists. The results from that evaluation will be compared to the results outputted by the convolutional neural network when the same 200 images are inputted. The second test involved using a set of 450 images that were pre-labeled online by radiologists. These images came from a similar source as the source used to train the convolutional neural network, and the results were compared to those outputted by the convolutional neural network when the same 450 images were inputted. From our first testing with the, with the team of radiologists, there was a 70% match between the results from the radiologist and the CNN. That would be 141 images being the same. And from the second testing, which came from the online source similar, which comprised of images from the online source similar to that of the training set, we received an output of 420 images being having matching results from between the CNN and the radiologist. 
due to restrictions caused by the pandemic, the radiologists were not able to complete their full testing sets. Thus, the F1 score is estimated and calculated based off of the second testing. We use the parameters to calculate the precision and recall and use those values to determine the F1 score. We acquired an F1 score of 0.93 for the model. And if we're putting this into perspective, an ultimate F1 score would have been one. Before we can embark on our final objective of gathering the strong and weak points of the CNN, we first had to ascertain whether the visualization mechanism was functional. We took 10 cases of clear heat map outputs consisting of five true positives and five false negatives. We cross-checked the heat map outputs with radiologist evaluation to see whether the results are matching. In this, we had 100% success rates. And, a, and an example can be seen here in radiograph 319. The heat map displays rejection zones at areas where the density of bones is insufficient. Those are the red highlights on the image. This was in keeping with radiologist five's evaluation sheet, which indicated poor density, although still acceptable. With the 23 false negatives found in testing set two, we use the heat maps that have now been confirmed as accurate to determine the reasoning for false classifications by the CNN. We found that out of the 23 heat maps, nine did not provide clear meaning as to why it was flagged invalid to a human eye, to the human eye. However, of the 14 remaining heat maps, seven of them were due to a patient that was slightly rotated, but not enough to be labeled invalid by a radiologist. Four were due to noise in the image, such as labels containing patient information. And three were due to the existence of pathology, such as a floating bone or diseases such as pneumonia or tuberculosis. The achievements we are able to document from this project thus far is that we determined that the CNN is the most suitable tool for the task. ResNet recorded an accuracy of 93% and outperformed traditional machine learning algorithms such as K-nearest neighbors and naive days. The convolutional neural network effectively conducted, qu conducted quality inspection for technical errors on both AP and PHS X-rays. We've created a consistent evaluation standard once the model is sufficiently trained and tested with images from the same source. There's a successful creation of a visualization mechanism, and we've highlighted that rotated images is one of the biggest weak points of the CNN in its current state. The limitations, however, are as follows. The model didn't perform to its full potential due to financial limitations as its great computational expense in training a CNN. Also, using the radiologist evaluation as a standard of comparison introduced subjectivity in the statistical evaluation of the model. For example, some radiologists were much stricter than others and will be accepted by the night. And lastly, the restricted supply of chest X-ray images from local hospitals due to the ongoing pandemic and lack of clearance meant that testing set one could not be appropriately trained for. To conclude, the convolutional neural network fell below the baseline of 95% on both testing sets and was not able to match radiologist evaluation of local images. However, the heat map visualization was 100% accurate, filling the gap left by Satyanda Kashyap, and it proved that slight rotation, labels, and pathology are the biggest sources of false negatives. Future Works for us would revolve around gaining access to a much larger training set of images from local hospitals. We would also have to train the, image, the CNN on more valid images with pathology, labels, and slight rotation to make up for its shortcomings. We would also require a greater budget to use ResNet 50 instead of ResNet 18 in, in the training of the machine learning model as we have to opt for a less intensive 
pre-trained model to use to make up for low system requirements. And the end goal of this entire project is that with an average response time of eight seconds, the model could be implemented on physical devices within the hospital so that images can be actively rejected in the workflow. This brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.